Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today we are doing something different, something special. We have a webcam here that is 60 frames per second and we are going to test it out whether this webcam is better than 30 frames per second or not. Normally these webcams, they are designed for video chatting and online conferences. But for us as computer vision enthusiasts, we want better frame rate. So these companies, they don't really care about frame rates, but it turns out some of them do. So for a very long period of time, we only had 30 frames per second cameras, uh, especially these webcams that are cheap. But now we have a lineup that is 60 frames per second. So I thought, why not check it out and try, try it out with a few of the algorithms to see if we get some better results. I haven't tested it out yet, but I'm hoping that our detections will be better, our tracking will be better, and with the addition of the Media Pipe library, which allows us to break that barrier of 30 frames per second and move on to uh, 50, 60, even 70 frames per second with just CPU, so we can easily integrate this with a lot of different applications and we can have a lot of good results. So let's go ahead and try it out and see what we need to do. So actually, let's open it up first. So we have uh, the boxing is not that fancy. It's pretty standard, but uh, this was actually $65 and I had to pay like $25 for the shipping. So overall, um, I was charged about $90 for the whole package. So if you are buying it, you probably could get it for $65 if you have prime shipping or something like that, if you don't live very far away. But for me, it was like that. So here is our camera. Now, by the looks of it, it is quite solid. If we compare it with the C920 Logitech, it is actually pretty much the same quality and it looks quite solid. And the good thing is that it comes with the camera thread. So the tripod thread that we can use to attach it to different tripods. And the best thing is that it comes with a guard. So this guard is important nowadays because of the privacy issues. So you can simply open it up and you can slide it back in. So that is quite handy. So let's go ahead and try it out and see what happens. So I'm going to go and connect this and then I will try to find its driver so we can run it. So the driver is actually not necessary, but it will help us uh, fine tune different things. So it is always good to test it out. So it is 9660P. I'm going to Google it and hopefully we will get our driver. Okay, so now I have installed the driver and let's open it up and see if we get something. So we have a window and it says preview. So let's open that up and there you go. So now we have the webcam and uh, I think it's trying to autofocus. Yeah. Yep, it's trying to autofocus. Let's try, let's try it here. And then we go back up. No, it's not focusing that much. Or is it just slow? Or is it on autofocus? I think it should be on autofocus by default. Yeah, yeah, it is focusing. So that's good. Okay, so we can set the white balance here. Normally the white balance is not very good. So we can set that later on. And then the brightness, contrast, and all of these things we can save. Now, the thing I am interested in is the resolution. So here we can see it's 640 and 480, and it says 33 frames per second, which is not that good. Why is it 30 frames per second? It says 60. Uh, let's go to 1280. So this now is HD quality. So it is still giving us 32, 33 frames per second which is not good um like right now we are not running anything on it so it should by default give us 60 frames per second but it is giving 30 something frames per second which is not what i expected and even this part here it's not very clear what's happening oh why is that 
Mm. Okay, is it because of the brightness? Yeah. <laughs> so there you go. So I think in a darker region, it's trying to do some processing as well to make the image quality better. And it is giving us lower frame rates. So maybe the carpet is a little bit brighter. So it is giving a higher frame rate. So we can try out with the lower uh, resolution, but yeah, now, now it, it seems quite smooth. But when we come here, it is 30 frames per second. So it's not consistent, that, that's not good. So now it's 50-ish again, there you go. You can, you can feel the difference when it's 60 and when it's 30. Like, you can see the blurriness. This is around 30 and this is around 60. 50-ish, yeah. Okay, so it is working, so we will have to manage the brightness. So I will try to add some more lights to make it a little bit brighter. And then we are going to try out uh, some different techniques to see how well it performs at 60 frames per second. So I will be using the CV zone package, which uses the media pipe library and OpenCV and NumPy. It uses a lot of different libraries to make this process of prototyping very easy, creating different techniques. So what we will do is we will write a small script to detect our hand and let's see how fast it detects and let's see how much blurriness do we get. Okay, so now I have attached the webcam to a tripod and I've also written a script to test it out. So let's go ahead and do that. So at this point, if I bring in my hand, you can see I can do the detection part, but it doesn't seem 60 frames per second. So let's go back and open up the software for this to see whether it's giving us 60 frames per second or is it 30 frames per second. So we saw that issue with the light. So let's try that out. Yeah, so this actually is good. The lighting is fine here. So it is giving 50 something, 54, 52. So I think we can consider that as 60 frames per second. It's not a big deal. Let's try it with 720. Yeah, even with 720, we are getting 60 frames per second. So after giving it some thought, I actually forgot to set our frame rate. So usually we don't set the frame rate because it is by default at 30 frames per second. But now that we want to bump it up to 60, we need to specifically define that we want 60 frames per second. And uh, the OpenCV library has this functionality. You can use the cap.set, uh, the set method to actually use the prop ID of FPS, and you can set it to 60. By default, it's at 30. So let's go ahead and try it out. So I've also added the FPS reader, so it can tell us what exactly is our FPS. So here we can see it's around 40 something on average. So that's not 60. Um, it definitely is a little bit less blur, but it, it's not 60 frames per second. It's much lower than that. So let's actually remove the the detection part and let's see whether it's because of the detection uh, model or is it because of the camera. So let's try that out. Okay, now it's giving really big numbers. Okay, yeah, it is 60 plus frames per second. So around 60 frames per second you can say. So definitely we are able to get 60 frames per second uh, using our OpenCV library and we are able to run that. So what we can do is actually we can try it out with a, with a larger image. So instead of having 640 by 480, let's try it out with 1280 by 720, which is your HD resolution. Okay, there you go. We have HD resolution now, and you can see it is still 60 frames per second, which is quite good. 
So it means that our model is holding us back to get that 60 frames per second. So instead of the hand detector, let's try it with a lighter model, uh, which is for the face detector. So I will go ahead and write the script for that, and we will test out with the face detection rather than hand detection. So now I have written the script for face detection. So let's try it out and see if we can get 60 frames per second. So right now we are getting 60 frames per second with our model and it is at 720p so which is quite good now we just need to see whether the face detection works or not so i'm going to bring in my face and there you go so you can see um again it is not a big difference maybe because of the lighting so if i move around so i can see that there is not a very drastic change um, just detecting this as the face as well but there's not a very drastic change but you can see that it is towards the 50 range earlier it was around what do you call 40 something it was going lower than 40 than 40 something that like that now it is around 50 ish so I think it is a little bit better but it's not at 60 frames per second Okay, so for my final thoughts, I think the camera itself is quite good. Uh, we are not getting 60 frames per second at all times, but it is able to give us 60 frames per second, quite close, 50 something-ish uh, most of the times. And sometimes because of the brightness, it is not able to give us uh, 60 frames per second. It drops back to 30 frames per second, which is quite annoying because if you are changing the scene and while you're shooting, then your frame rate drops suddenly that will be very annoying but most of the times with computer vision task we have a consistent light so i don't think that will be a big issue but um when we are using different models we can see it depends on the model as well whether you will get 60 frames per second or not but uh, going from 25 to 30 frames to 40 to 50 i think it's a big jump it's not 100 percent extra it has not doubled but I think it's completely worth it to go and invest in a camera like this because it will give you that extra frame rate. So you will be able to process your videos, your live webcam stream much faster. And we have seen this in videos. They are much faster than the actual webcams that we have. Maybe this camera will close in that gap. But we will get some higher frame rates from our webcams as well. So the link will be in the description for this camera. Uh, this video is not sponsored by this company and uh, I, I have paid full price for this. So this is my honest opinion that this camera is worth it because it is cheaper than the C920 Logitech. And I think the quality itself is quite similar. It's not amazing. And even the Logitech camera, they are not very amazing. So the quality is good and I think they are pretty similar and it is cheaper than that and it is 60 frames per second. So if you are doing computer vision tasks, whether it's robotics or whether it's pure AI tasks just for image processing or something like that, then I think it is worth to spend a little bit more to get this 60 frames per second compared to other cameras which are 30 frames per second. So this is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this video was useful for you to make the decision to get this camera or not that has 60 frames per second. So until next video, goodbye.